Uh, greetings, guys. Uh, this is by force uh, featuring TG. Friend at the back there is the CEO of the TG and the founder. So we'll be doing the structure of a business a little bit. Perhaps you have a business and you're not sure how to go about whether it's small or big. I'm not sure what to do with it. Um, you don't know what is the next step. You have an idea, you haven't started, you don't know how to start a business. So we'll be having these chats almost every Thursday. We'll be speaking a little bit about business, trying to help out with the little information that we have. And if you would like to help with anything, you can just come to us, text us, or join. You can find us on media, hashtag by force. Uh, find us on WhatsApp is 084-659-424. And I can forward the numbers of the TG marketing once you get there. So the coffee chat is about the structure of the business brought to you by hashtag my course clothing and it is in collaboration with the TG marketing. Uh, it is being presented by me, Brendan, and the founder and the CEO of hashtag my course and also in the last there will be Torello, which is the founder and the CEO of TG marketing. Uh, just to start over, the mini agenda that we have, the first thing we'll be speaking about the difference uh, between a small business and a big business. And then we'll be speaking about the structure of a small business, like how a small business can be structured. This is my opinion. So someone can come with other opinions, professions can come with their own opinions, but I'm speaking from experience. So we'll be looking at the structure of a big business now. And then we'll look at the importance of a business or a, a structure in a business. From there, and we'll be done. So last week, the other week, we we're speaking about just a business. Because this is the second copy chat. So we spoke about what is business. Uh, we spoke about why we should do business. We spoke about uh, how to start a business. So we exhausted these three questions, what, why, and how spoke that you don't need capital for you to start. You need an idea and nurture it and then do planning around it. Capital can come later on. Some people have capital first before the actual work. So that is what we spoke about. Then we spoke a little bit about the hashtag by post logo. Then let's look at business at large. Like what's happening with business? So we have a small business and a big business. That's business at large. Um, with a small business, you notice it by the fact that it cannot continue operating in the absence of the owner. So if the owner is not there, let's say it's a quarter shop, it's a quarter business, when the owner is not there, the business form can no longer function anymore. And another thing, sometimes it needs finances from the owner's pocket. That means that the owner must sacrifice some finances for him to get the business running sometimes to rescue the business and so forth. And then the big business, you notice it by the fact that it can function fully at the absence of the owner. If there's no manager at the workplace, it doesn't mean the workplace will not function. It will function. And another thing about the big business is that it really needs finances from the owner's pocket. Sometimes it does, but it is rare because sometimes you'll get sponsors and so forth. With a small business, it's not easy to get a sponsor because you need to register, registration takes time and money, you see, you see that. So with a big business, already it is being, it is registered, you can get sponsors, things like Transnet and so forth, move out around. Uh, that is the difference between the small business and the big business. So the big, the small business, how you start it or how it goes about, the first thing you get an idea, then you nurture that idea. That means you build on that idea, put some water there, starts growing. Then you plan it. When you plan the idea, uh, you, you plan an idea. So when you get an idea, let's say maybe now I'm just thinking uh, about selling sweets. So after, uh, as I think about selling sweets, I have to nurture it in me so that I, lo I love it, so that the business grows in me first. The love for it grows and I love it more than I plan it. I plan when I'm planning is where you the marketing and advertisement and checking the ge geographical areas and so forth. You see that. 
So I'll be checking such things uh, to notice who exactly. Let me just check here. And uh, someone. Uh, the chance Okay. Okay, it's fine. Yep. So you'll plan it after planning it. And uh, that is when you just jot something down. It's a small business. Just jot a few things down. We check where are you going to sell whatever you're going to sell. Are people going to love it? Are there enough resources to go there? You check such things, man. Small yana things. It's a small business. So you need small yana things, but you, don't, you must not limit it for you to not be big. Because a small business can go to be big. Then you finance the idea as you love it. So financing the idea, now you take out money. The plan is a theoretical business, then the finances go to the actual business. Then you get to the actual business, you finance it. <clears throat> then you'll get to the business. Then as you finance it, you get enough people. And you don't just get anyone, you get people who are useful around you. For example, I can't just say because I'm selling quarters, I will go to a mother. What if she doesn't know how to make quarters? Then that means your business will be a blunder. So you get necessary people around to help you then operate. See, that is just the structure of a small business. How you structure it, you need to be there. Remember, the small business cannot function fully. If you leave it as an owner, you'll find it different. You'll not find a business that you would used to own. <laughs> you'll find another business you don't know. That is your um, small business. Then structure of a small business, just to get in detail. The only thing you need, you need one or very few directors, and the rest are just suppliers. So a director is the owner, so you just need one owner for a small business or a few people, two, three people or two people can come and say, let's start a quarter business and they start sharing the profit and so forth. So those are two directors. Then the rest that are involved are suppliers. Where do you get bread? Where do you get whatever that you get cheese? You must get proper suppliers for that. Then another thing you must get only, uh, you will need only to do the paperwork because of tricky. So you don't need paperwork because of any other thing. You need paperwork because of only tracking. So that you track the system, you track the money, you check where is the money going? How am I going to spend this money here? Like, and so forth. Uh, on your planning, that is where you do the paperwork. You just jot it down. There is no proper plan. Like, there is no proper template where you say, this is where I put my money now. Then you'll have the bigger plan while doing small. That is now when you change from a smaller business to a bigger one. When your small business is operating well, you can get a bigger plan. For example, let's say you were selling um, fed cakes at the street. It's a small business. Once you leave it, it's gone. So when you see that it's operating, you can plan now. How do you make it big? You can try to get a place where you can put the manufacture of those cakes become a bigger. Then where you will have other, you will see the structure of a big business where you no longer need one director or a few directors, but you are the owner, you have and the manager of the branches and so forth. That is the structure of a small business. Hope you get it. So the structure of a big business, the first thing you check with the chief executive officer. So when I started, I said, uh, Sarelli is the chief executive officer of TG. So a chief executive officer, in my simple term, it's someone who overlooks all executives. So if there's anyone that is involved in your business, the chief executive officer is the one that overlooks them. He makes sure that everything is done properly for everything. Let's say uh, hashtag by force has about seven branches. As the CEO, I'm the one who's overseeing all the branches. Then each branch has its own manager. So the manager oversees the branch. That's the role of the chief executive officer, the CEO. Then we have the manager, which is the one that leads a branch. Then from a manager, you have the chair. Man, they're not in order. I'm just showing you a few things that a big company needs. So it needs also a chairman 
you might have the chief executive officer, manager, and the other COOs and so forth, and not have the chairman, or you can have the chairman. So the chairman mostly, I, I regard them as the dictator, they are the ones who call the shots. So when the chairman says, this is how the business will start running, that's how we do it. If the chairman or the, if the chairman of maybe spa in the world and this and now says, no, we will start selling milk at 15 run, all spas, they have to comply to that through the help of the managers because each and every spa has its own manager. Then you have the directors. So the directors are all the involved stakeholders in the boardroom. They are the ones who take the decisions, they vote for decisions. With if you have 15 directors, there's no decision that can be made by only a three of them. So you'll need more than three for you to be able to uh, participate properly. So looking at the directors, also we are checking the people who is the people who make sure that the business, they, they overlook the future business, like how the future of whatever business that you have will be. Uh, if it's a business of selling shoes, the directors will sit down and start checking what exactly is happening in the future for this uh, page. So once they notice that, they see, okay, this is what is going to happen. Then they come back, make decisions. So directors are just involved in there. They make sure that the business doesn't fall. So that even if the CEO is also part of the directors in the big board of the big business. So that is how it is. And then let's check. Uh, there are many other structures or uh, elements involved in the structure of the big business. But one of them, which is very important, is the employees. So you have to get the employees as a big business. Remember, having a small business, you don't need employees. If you are selling quarters, you can operate on your own. Operate. There is a business that you know in Kasi, which is just operating. Uh, there is only the owner, or there is a supermarket, which you saw when we were growing up. Even now, it's still there. It's only the owner who's operating there. That's a small business, because once the owner leaves, the business falls. So now, because uh, if you check with the big business, it will have employees. So if the CEO is not in the Tembisa branch or in the Johannesburg branch or in the Limpopo branch, it doesn't mean that the branch will not function. It will function well. Why? Because there are employees which are, which are making sure that the hard labor is happening and there's a manager who is making sure that the business is directed properly. Uh, so the employees are the personnel who are employed to run the mission of the business, they are hard to labor. Then you have the external stakeholders that is involving people like cleaners, security, and transportation. And transportation. A small business, you don't need a cleaner unless it is trying to grow to be a big business. Most of them don't need security. You just put your container there, you're done. But with a big business, Nike needs uh, security. Adidas needs security. They need cleaners. They need transportation. So either they will, trans uh, they will transport on their own or they will call external transportation. Then a big business involves policies, constitution, regulations, other parameters, uh, laws, rules, and obligations, and all. Uh, with the manager, before they take the job, they will make an oath. They will say, I prepare to make sure that the mission of this company goes forward. So that is what the structure of a big business. If you check all these things, a small business doesn't have all of them. It has actually less because it's, it has only directors which can be one or a few. The chief executive officer is not there or unless the director calls himself the chief executive officer, then you, uh, it doesn't have policies, it doesn't have constitution. If you go to someone who, sell, who is suing shoes on the street, and say, show me your constitution, you'll be certain of them. Why they are a small business. So, from my own, I'm finishing up with this slide here. So, we are discussing a little bit of a big business. When you start it, you get an idea, you plan the idea, then you register the business. A small business, you don't need to register, a big one, you register. 
when you register you need constitution you will need policies which will regulate the big business on how it will function and then you get sponsors let's say you want to build a mall is it that's a big business it's a big big business if you want to build a mall you must get sponsors unless if you have your own sponsors and sponsorship is fine you have directors and employees and then there you operate because you can't just operate if you don't have money you can't operate without followers you can't operate without directors you can't operate without employees you can't operate without rules and regulations when employees come they sign a contract they say we are we will be working from this day to that day those are contracts which can fall under policies and also the constitution so i can say that is all from me so think of it as an essay without a mind map that it is without direction again so you'll have to start from the ground up and structuring your business you'll have to structure it in such a way that at that moment so you have to structure it considering the future and also the moment it, it needs to fit the current and also the future né? so think of it that way so let's go to the second point so also you think it as it as, as structuring your business as a, a car without a steering wheel which is you cannot easily control it because you think the people you're going to get on the team are people that you mostly do not know, which you must not do because you, whoever you get on the team, you must make sure you clearly know them and you clearly know their goals and you clearly share the mission and the values of the, of your company, right? So that's what is needed. Going to the third uh, point. So think of everyone uh, was a president, ne? there's no order. So let's say you put someone as the uh, chief of uh, finances, I get CFO, chief of finance. So when you put that someone, they think that at that position, they are the president there. So it is not easy to tell them that you need to adjust uh, your budget, you need to adjust that and that, and reallocate the budget from uh, that stream to that stream and think of other ways. So they think that they are the key in that uh, area. So. That, that is why it is difficult, but as a manager or as a CEO, because the CEO is basically a manager, but overseeing the whole thing. Uh, so you need to have the tactics, which uh, I believe we've discussed last week with Mr. Brandon. Uh, you need to, to, to know now which style to approach someone with when you are uh, managing them. Yeah. So uh, going to the fourth point, uh, ask many people one long question again they won't give the same answer so it's basically that uh you can go to the after get, getting whoever you need on the team right the chief executive officer that will be used not you cannot uh don't get someone to be the ceo uh unless it's after some time because you need to know first of the world so coming back to our point uh so you need to let's say for example you've got uh, at least five people on the team when you're starting out right? so you need to go ask them to make sure that you guys are on the same page go there and ask them if uh one question Jay, saying that what is the mission why do you exist this guy so there you have uh more than 50 percent chances to get different answers because uh everyone has, has their own mission when they enter a business, let's say, for example, it's a, it's, it's a clothing brand. Let's say Mr. Brandon recruits me and say, oh, man, I want you to come to my place, to my company, etc. to be a head of digital something, something like that. Then I'll obviously have my, uh, my own mission in mind. Oh, I'm going to join a, a clothing, a Nike, this kind of, a company like Nike and so forth. Oh, which means, oh, now I start imagining, uh, laying out the ideas that I'm going to execute. But these are not the same ideas that the CEO or, because the CEO is basically the business or whatever they put down on the paper. It's not the exact same thing that they hold. So that's where the conflict is gonna come. So whenever getting people on the team, make sure that you make that clear, that if it's a clothing brand, make sure if you want to your clothing brand to, to be uh, known by, to be respected in, whatever manner 
like to, to when people think of a brand to think of formal or anything make sure you clearly communicate that, that to your uh, uh, people while structuring your business so from me that's all thank you very much guys and i'll hand over to mr brandon yeah no it's over then we're going to have questions and answers but now because of time we'll just leave it uh, so by that we say next week is the same time same gender what we'll be doing next week we'll be discussing marketing and advertisement so we'll be checking how do you market your business since now we have structured it how do you market it how do you advertise you can have you ever seen Bentley being advertised on ET? They're very rare so but they're buying it. why because they know their advertisement so this is from um hashtag by force and tg marketing